Hey guys, Sleepy Reader here uh, with my last random haul for May. Probably my last random haul for quite a while. Kind of went crazy this month um, because of this month long 50 cent sale at three comic book shops in my area. Um, so I kept bouncing back and forth between them. And uh, I have a bazillion things to read now and uh, very little time to read them. So it's it's been a lot of fun and once you get started searching and you pick up things and then you want to pick up other things. Uh, but uh, so the sale ends at the end of May and uh, and I'm just gonna just buy a few regular comic books a month and stick with that for a while. So uh, in the most recent searches, which I guess took place at two different comic book shops in the past week and a half, I picked up some more Kirby-related comic books. Here's a, a Mr. Miracle special uh, drawn by Steve Rood, which looks like it's going to be really good. Uh, Steve Rood's a really great artist. If any of you have not uh, taking a look at his long career spanning run on Nexus. Uh, that's where he does it, or to my knowledge, done his most brilliant work. Um, and Nexus is is very unique, although full of lots of Kirby and Alex Toth uh, related touches. Um, so that was one of my Kirby related things. And then um, I knew there was another New Gods series, but I couldn't remember what it was, and then I stumbled across it. Jack Kirby's Fourth World, uh, done, written and drawn by John Byrne. Um, what's the date on that? Back in 97. So um, I'm pretty excited to find this. Uh, John Byrne doing a take on, on New Gods is definitely something I want to see. And I used to look around to see if there was a trade paperback for this, and I never did find it, if there was one. Um, so I've got issue number 7 and issue number 10. There's an intense cover. And issue number 12. So somehow, someday I've got to search for all the rest of those. Um, Another in this Bruce Jones OMAC series. I think I now may have most of the series. Or maybe I've just picked up another another duplicate. I'm not even sure I've got to check. Um, part of this Kirby Genesis series written by Kurt Busiak. So that should be good. Um, or interesting anyway. And then I picked up some more of these Orions from... Uh, from Walt Simonson back whenever in the 90s also. Um, and so I, I think I've got a lot of these Orions now. I'm going to have to figure out what's missing there. So I suppose I'm not going to completely stop buying back issues because I want to fill out the, uh, the various New Gods series uh, if I can find not too expensive copies of them. <clears throat> i got a good start with all these 50 cent copies. These I love these Walt Simonson covers. They're really cool. Um, and although Walt Simonson does a great job on a lot of Kirby classic kind of things like Thor, his style is very different from Kirby, but still captures that bigness and excitement. So Walt Simonson's a real comic book hero to me. Um, just lots of great covers. So that was, we had um, Orion number four. Number six, number nine. I say all the numbers because if I ever rewatch these videos, it'll be useful to me. Number sixteen and number seventeen. And then further fielding Kirby related is this interesting and somewhat good, although I never decided fully what I felt about Godland, uh, where they really do very you know, a cosmic Kirby story uh, with art that's extremely reminiscent of Kirby, although not nearly as good, but still fun to look at. And I picked up a lot of Godland issues, and then I kind of 
stopped going to comic book stores, etc., for a number of years just because I was so busy. And I picked up one Godland trade paperback. But anyway, I have a lot of Godland to fill in, so I just grabbed the ones that were there that I was pretty sure I didn't already have. Um, so that's probably my most thematic group. But then I, in all this trolling through bins, I picked up a lot of Trinities already, so I just decided to keep picking up more of them. Here's uh, number 14. They have great covers, and I still haven't read any yet. And I accidentally got two copies of number 14. Number 15. Oh, look at that. Continues on. Looks like there's different versions of Superman here. And number 22. I wonder if number 16 continues that picture. But anyway, uh, here on number 22, we've got the green arrows who look or various Green Arrow and some other archer woman fighting off, what, werewolves? That looks kind of cool. Number 31. And I know I have um, the one, already picked up the ones leading up to this issue. Number 32. Oh, and that's, that's a, another one of these continuous pictures. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed any of this while picking things out of the bin. Number 33. Oh, and that continues. Very interesting. So if I go like that, got myself a very intense little poster there. Anyway, whoever did these covers is pretty brilliant. Um, number 35. Oh, yeah, so. Uh, it'd be interesting if I get the whole run and put all the covers one after the other what it would look like. So there's another continued picture to num from 35 to 36. There's 43. 46. So those are all the trinities I picked up. And I grabbed Batman, uh, Superman slash Batman number 17. I've been told that the Jeff Loeb uh, run on this is the part that's worth getting, and I mostly have post-Jeff Loeb, I think, but I'll start looking for the Jeff Loeb ones when I can get them. There's 30, yeah, which is no longer Jeff Loeb. It's Veer Hayden is the writer, and I'm not sure who that is. Um, number 30, and then number 39... Whether or not these later issues are any good, they certainly have, they also have really great covers. I think that's why in the bins I've kept, when looking, kept picking up both Trinity and uh, Superman slash Batman because of just these great covers. And the general feeling like I would like to read more good things about Superman and Batman, and particularly Superman, but I never know where to find Superman that I'm going to like. Here's just random goodies, things I couldn't uh, couldn't say no to for 50 cents. Um, I've been curious. I haven't started the Jason Aaron, Mark Silvestri run on The Incredible Hulk. Uh, good writer, Mark Silvestri was an artist I used to be very impressed with, especially back when he did Wolverine in the early Wolverine, uh, solo Wolverine days. So I've got the first two issues of that run. I'll see if I like those. Oh, and this just looked fun. I think it must be a reprint of Dial H for Hero. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's done in the style. Because it says, here it is, an all-new tale from the Silver Age. Robbie Reed, the boy who can change into a thousand superheroes. The most original, comics, original character in comics history. Dial H for Hero. 250 cents. So maybe that's uh, just done in the Silver Age style. Um, that just looks fun to me. It looks like it's from the year 2000. Some random questions. I just thought I'd try the question and see see whether it's of interest. I've always I like Denny O'Neill as a writer, um, although I'm not that into the artist Dennis Cohen. Cohen, Cohen, Dennis Cohen. I don't know. 
Um, although that's that's a cool cover. And anything with Dave Givens art, I thought I'd give it a try. So I I grabbed Martha, Martha Washington Dies. I know I read Martha Washington in her original run ages and ages ago, but um, this looks like just sort of a one-off sentimental piece, but it'll be fun to look at the artwork. The Ran Thanagar War. Um, I already picked up some Ran Thanagar War, so I was just looking to grab any that I didn't already have. Spider tw 2099. I really liked Spider-Man, I said Spider-2099, I really liked Spider-Man 2099. Um, I don't think, I think I originally I had a run of about 20 or 30 issues. And this is issue 43, so I just thought I'd grab it and see what, where it went. And I thought I, I guess I have the whole Tom Strong run written by Alan Moore. And I think I stopped picking it up when Alan Moore stopped writing it. Um, I had no idea Ed Brubaker ever wrote it, so I just thought it'd be fun to see what an Ed Brubaker issue of Tom Strong is like. For anyone who doesn't know about Tom Strong, um, I think it was Alan's Moore, Moore's attempt to go back to the more simple, pure superhero and not deconstruct superheroes, although he couldn't resist deconstructing it in certain ways, but he kept it sort of pure and innocent. So it's an interesting exact opposite to Watchmen and shows that he didn't, despite Watchmen seemingly to kill off the possibility of him writing superheroes, he went back to them many times. Anyway, probably because they're just a very interesting subject for storytelling. And I picked up another, I think the last of this series, The Next, Superman and The Next, uh, written by Tad Williams, which is the reason I picked it up in the first place. So now I believe I have every issue except issue five in this the next run and then I had no idea that Walt Simonson wrote a series about the Hawk Girl so I grabbed just these two that I found I think they're in the wrong order Hawk Girl number 54 I was particularly intrigued by this Walt Simonson writing with art by Howard Chaikin uh, seems very promising and then uh, the end of Hot Girl, number 66. And I don't know if that really turned out to be the end or not. They're always ending things, aren't they? But I'll check those out. So I guess uh, with this long haul, long month-long hauls, I have so much to read, and anything I like then will cause me to go out and seek more comic books. And the addiction will continue. Um, part of the, one of the themes of this haul was picking up a lot of John Byrne. And I think, I picked up some Next Men, and I think I missed issue four, um, from this IDW version of Next Men, which has these really great covers. So I grabbed that number four, and I had picked up a run of Namor the Submar Submariner, or Submariner, Submariner, I guess, uh, by John Byrne, and I think that I got up to issue 17 or 16. So I grabbed some more of those, number 18, oh, number 17. So I have those out of order, number 17, number 18. Those, um, these covers look very good to me. Uh, I, I, well, I'm going to have to go look and see if I already picked up some of these. But I'm pretty sure my the previous run left off at 16 or 18. Nine Wives. That looks intriguing. I'd like Nine Wives. Um, or maybe I'd like No Wives. Um, number 20. Number 21. It seems like uh, he was connecting connecting Namor to uh, Iron Fist. Call My Land, Kun Lun. I think that's where Iron Fist comes from. And there's Iron Fist there. Unless I could destroy this creature, Iron Fist is doomed, the root of evil. So it seems an interesting pairing, Iron Fist and Namor. I think there was a period in which uh, John Byrne was doing Iron Fist also. I don't know. So maybe that's why it's connecting them. There's Iron Fist's fist, like unto a thing of iron, number 23. And number 24, Submariner versus Wolverine. I thought that would be fun to see. I think... Oh, it's still by John Byrne. It may be the end of John Byrne's run on Namor. 
not totally sure. I also grabbed a few more New 52 that were just laying around in these bins. Um, I, I uh, am enjoying the Resurrection Man, um, and I may already have these issues digitally, but um, Resurrection Man's a lot of fun, at least so far. We'll have to see. I haven't. I have. I'm not up to date on Resurrection Man. We'll have to see if if it lives up to the plot that it's setting up. And then I did a small um, haul from a seller on eBay, not on eBay, somewhere on the internet, uh, uh, what's it called? I just can't remember. Um, and I decided, because it wasn't too expensive, to grab Watchmen number 11, which I will be reviewing soon in the Watchmen series. Uh, and maybe someday I'll try to collect all the Watchmen issues. This one's in nice condition except for this one kind of scratch right there in the cover, which is too bad. <laughs> I haven't taped, I put them in these new Mylar bags I got. I got, bought a bunch of Mylar bags online through Amazon, I think, because I um, wanted to rebag all these commandies and other things like that from the uh, early 70s of mine. These were supposed to be Silver Age Mylar bags. They were too small. I could not fit the commandies and other early 70s comics into it. It seems like some maybe later 70s comics fit in. But so uh, seven, they're seven and a quarter wide and that's just not wide enough. So I feel kind of frustrated. <clears throat> I think I have to order directly from Gerber um, to get the wider ones. And you have to do a pretty big order from them. I guess I'll be doing that soon. Uh, so, while I was also grabbing the Watchmen, you, you got, for the same postage, you could do up to nine comics. So I just got nine comics. Picked out some Thors that I'd like. I'm trying to put together a Thor run. Uh, so that was 251. And these are with Jack Kirby covers, but it's not Jack Kirby on the inside. I think uh, one of the ones I got is Walt Simonson on the inside, early Walt Simonson Thor, and the rest are John Buscema, who does a wonderful Thor. Oh, I know, inside, this has the John Buscema cover, and this cover's totally screwed up, full of wrinkles. But it has uh, beautiful early Walt Simonson Thor arch inside. That's Thor 261. Thor 258, Coming of Carcass. I think he was part of the Eternals. And then the other other thing I'm trying to fill up, fill in a run is uh, Captain America. And um, so Captain America 215. I, for some reason, I particularly like Captain America when it was done by Sal Buscema. Um, I think he was at a, or one of the peaks of his career when he was doing a lot of Captain America. I'm not sure if these are Sal Buscema issues. Um, covers by Gil Kane, obviously. Uh, this is Captain America and the Falcon number 189. Oh, I've got them out of order. And then this, a new thing I'd like to do is pick up Avengers from the, uh, from the uh, Roy Thomas era. It was usually Roy Thomas and uh, John Buscema, but other artists came in and out of that. And I, I think this is kind of a peak for the Avengers, uh, and a peak, a peak in Roy Thomas's career as a writer. It was very exciting stuff. Um, and then I, <clears throat> this cost almost nothing, and I thought, oh, I really like, I really have fun watching um, Oddfellow thoughts collecting Doom Patrol. Who else is like Doom Patrol? That's some goofy group that might be fun to collect. And I saw the Metal Man, I thought, well, maybe that would be fun. But I didn't enjoy this issue at all, I'm afraid. Uh, it's of an era... It's kind of a fun foil cover, and my, my daughter really wanted to read it just seeing the cover, but the inside there, it was just very uninteresting and done, drawn and written in kind of a dull way. So, I don't know if I'll be pursuing Metal Men. It's some fun thing to collect. And of course, right now, I've, I've told myself I'm going to stop collecting for a while. 
So, thanks for joining me uh, on this uh, random walk through some comics. And uh, I'll look forward to watching all your videos.